All right, what we're going to do today is look at filing your flight plan. Let's say you've checked the weather, you've planned your route, you've got all your navigation squared away, you've uh, verified that everything looks great for the flight and you're ready to file your flight plan. When I learned to fly back in the late 80s, this was a bit of a cumbersome process. You had to uh, fill out your flight plan uh, on paper and then call the flight service station and then read off block by block your flight plan in order to file it. Now, of course, with the uh, technological advances we've had, we can do this all online. And there are a number of services that can do this for you. Um, there's services on your iPhone, apps you can get for your iPhone and your Android. Uh, there are online services, a number of them. The two of the most popular ones, uh, at least uh, from what I can tell, are, are DTC Duot and CSC Duots. Um, these stand for Direct User Access Terminal, and these uh, connect directly to um, the FAA computers and allow you to file your flight plan. Uh, DTC Duot uh, is is here and honestly it's just a matter of personal preference I like the interface over here at CSC Duots there's only one letter difference in their URLs here DTC Duot or, or I'm sorry Duot.com and then over here is Duots.com so you not, you need to be careful if whatever one you want if you get the wrong one just check the URL make sure you've entered the, the correct URL now on this home page you can do a number of things if we just go across the top here you can get weather briefings you can get a standard briefing an outlook and an abbreviated briefing uh, right here on your computer I will tell you that it generates quite a bit of, of uh, information when you get a standard briefing and I'll show you one of those in just a minute you can get weather graphics uh, next red radar surface charts forecast charts uh, it's a very easy interface to navigate. Be sure and always check uh, temporary flight restrictions, um, TFRs, and make sure that you're not going to be busting a TFR. Flight planning. Uh, you can file your flight plan. You can work on planning a flight. You can store flight plans here if you make a trip regularly. You don't want to type that in every time you go. Um, terminal procedures. Um, closing flight plans you can do once you get to your destination here online. Um, your account, one of the neat things I like is that you can store aircraft. So I can come in here and look at, I've got just one aircraft stored right now, and uh, but you can put all of its information here, what type of equipment it has, uh, and uh, so sometimes there's a lot of confusion early on in people's flight training sometimes as to what the slant is after it's a DA-40 slant golf in this case. So. Uh, you can do all that and just do it once and store it and it will uh, take care of that for you so we go back here there's the aircraft profiles if I had more than more than just the one they would drop down here in a menu um, your personal profile which contains your password and everything else and uh, and then some, a help section so it's a, it's a really neat site and uh, it's pretty helpful and, but it's not the only one so this is the one that, that I typically use so let's file a flight plan let's say we're, we're set to go we're going to go from we're going to go from uh, Nashville to Columbus Georgia let's say first thing we do that you'll notice that this looks just like the standard printed flight plan you may have seen in your aircraft uh, 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 books in your uh, flight training books uh, I select VFR, IFR, and I'm assuming we're, we're going VFR here on this flight. Aircraft identification, everything is populated based on that aircraft profile that I showed you earlier. If you've gotten a briefing, for instance, also, in this case, I've already looked at a briefing for this flight, uh, it pulls in from any information I put when I requested my flight, my standard flight briefing. So I told it I wanted to leave around 1700, so it automatically populated it here. Uh, on this screen but you can change that if you're going to leave at 1900 or so you can change it one thing I like about this is that it gives you the option of saying minutes from now if I'm going to leave in 60 minutes or if I want to assign any particular uh, time zone or just using UTC time so that's a pretty flexible thing for you so let's just say I'm, in, I'm on central time and we'll just say we're going to leave at 1700 
cruising altitude. Now, one of the things that most often cause a glitch in this system in, in filing your flight plan is cruising altitude. Many people uh, are used to thinking in terms of 5,000 and if we're cruising at 5,000 feet. That's not how this program works. This program wants it more in a flight level format, so in this case 050 would be 5,000 feet. Route of flight, um, you can do a couple of things here. Typically I will leave it blank if I'm just going direct. Um, I have also said direct before, um, just to iterate that point. Or you can assign a, a Victor Airway to a uh, to an airport, um, KPDK, if we want to stop in Peachtree to cab or whatever the case may be. So you can add in your route of flight there if you're uh, you've got preferred route link here if you need that as well but basically if we're going direct I'll usually will leave this blank destination Columbus Georgia estimated time and route here uh, I encourage my students to leave a, a little buffer in there um, if you figured in your flight planning that it's going to take you exactly uh, two hours to make the flight uh, and that that's usually just flight time I usually put in a little bit of a buffer there so that it, my phone's not ringing and these guys will call if you forget to close um, so I, I built in a, a pretty hefty buffer in there and then remarks if you have anything to say there on some IFR flight flight plans you'll say no SIDS or stars if that's how you want to do it um, if you've got anything that you think is pertinent to your flight you can put it there fuel on board alternate airports if any remember if you're IFR there's certain requirements um, to filing an alternate if you need to check those uh, pilot name and address uh, aircraft home base so on and so forth and a destination contact one of the things I like about this is that it will email you uh, a notification of your flight plan you just click flight plan acknowledgement and put my uh, put your, your email address there and it'll send it to you so it's a very simple form. It looks just like your normal uh, flight plan form that you may have seen in your books. And then we just click File This Flight Plan. And then it'll bring up this screen as long as there are no errors. Uh, it will bring up this screen and show you a summary of it and then, it, and then tell you that it sent a notification to your email address. Then it will lead you back to a weather briefing if you need to look back at the weather. So filing a flight plan is really not hard. It's, it's easy to do. I would encourage you. These are free accounts. You can log on to here on CSC Duots or DTC Duots. Um, they're free and if we log out and then come back in it will show you here the uh, the user login page and then here um, this is the screen that you'll see if you go directly to this and you're not registered uh, it just says create new account and you're off and running and you can file your flight plans here on on uh, CSC Duots so hope this is helpful to you feel free to, to share it and uh, review it and if there's anything I can do uh, feel free to email me at chris at myflightcoach.com and until next time remember to fly often and fly safe